Hello everyone, I uh, hope you and your families are well. Now Thursday is normally a uh, timetabled for a year 13 assembly, but year 12 is also invited, um, partly because this unusual multi-venue approach um, means we've got plenty of room for you all, and partly because notions of time and timetables are shifting and changing somewhat. We are nine school days into school closures, and already it seems something strange is happening to time. Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about time this morning. So we do our best um, to define time and to have it as something objective that can be measured and defined by our watches, our clocks, our, our phones. But it remains a slippery idea. If you think about how time flies when you're enjoying yourself, for example, it, when I'm teaching, I'll know if a lesson has been enjoyed when the instruction to pack away at the end is met with genuinely astonished faces that it seems unreal that an hour could have passed. On the other hand, of course, um, a lesson can feel like it's uh, going on forever and, and students will ask what the time is, a little bit like people in the back seat of a car asking, are we nearly there yet on, a, on an endless car journey? And as we grow older, time can seem to speed up. The years can seem to flash past. It's unbelievable. Easter again already? Are we April already? And then later in the year, Christmas again already? And maybe this is just a, a mathematical fact. You know, if you're 10 years old, then a year is, is a tenth of your entire life and therefore something huge. But for your grandparents at 60 or 70, the years are proportionally growing shorter and shorter. So this, you'll notice this when, when you'll hear parents saying things like um, about how fast you're growing. Oh, you're growing so fast. Whereas perhaps to you, the, the process doesn't really feel like it's that fast at all. It, in fact, it can feel like it's going on forever. Another example of this relativity of time is, is how it behaves differently depending on the circumstances, how it's experienced during moments of crisis, for example. If you've ever had the misfortune to be involved in a car accident, you'll know what I mean. You, you see the car pulling out in front of you, you know you're about to crash, and time seems to suddenly stretch. We talk about life flashing before our eyes at moments like this. It certainly feels like you can experience a whole load of thoughts, feelings, and emotions, or even memories in what realistically is only a split second before impact. It's like time warps and stretches. I sometimes wonder um, about how time feels to animals. I'm sure you also wonder how time feels to animals. If your lifespan is as short as, say, a mayfly that lives for just 24 hours, then what does an hour feel like? Is, is the fact that no matter how quickly you try to swat a fly or a mosquito, it manages to casually escape every time, is that because it, it sees us moving massively slowly? and laughs at our pathetic efforts. Now, of course, the experienced fly squatters, squatters, swatters among you will know that if you approach your prey very slowly, it won't see you coming. Perhaps then we look like we're motionless to them. Getting a bit sidetracked. Now, Einstein famously concluded that time was relative and that the only constant entity by which anything could be measured was the speed of light using mathematical models. He suggested that time can run faster or slower depending on how high up you are and how fast you're traveling. And this, is, this has been demonstrated recently with an experiment using um, a hugely accurate atomic clock or two hugely accurate atomic clocks. Scientists at a tech institute in Colorado found that two of these clocks positioned just a foot apart in height um, found that time really does move more quickly literally more quickly the higher you are something to do with gravitational pull you'd have to ask a physicist how that works but the question is raised does your life feel longer or is it indeed actually longer if you live on the ground floor than if you live at the top do indeed lessons on the second floor of the east building where ironically physics is taught are they actually longer than lessons on the ground floor. Now I know that speaking to some of you over the past few days on the telephone and from what I'm told by your tutors that 
Many of you are experiencing some weird time effects at the moment too. Even if you are managing to stick to something like a, a normal schedule, you've been experiencing time differently. It feels like it's stretched out in front of you and most of the normal markers and busy pressures are gone, replaced by unexpected challenges. One year 12 student I spoke to recently said she's never had so much time and yet it feels really hard to get anything done and I don't expect, expect she's alone. There's a saying that if you want something done, ask somebody who's busy to do it, which seems to suggest that the busier we are, the more productive we are, kind of like a positive vicious circle. The flip side of this, of course, is what some of you have described experiencing. Another irony of all this, of course, is that we talk about being in lockdown, but in many ways our time is far less locked down at the moment than it was before all of this business started. So what's the solution? So ideally, I suppose, we'd find a way to enjoy this dislocation out of time and still be able to get done the stuff we need to, whether it's helping out at home, keeping our minds fit with study and reading or our bodies fit with exercise, it's a challenge. The one answer is surely to have some sort of routine, routines around bed and sleep, waking time, an exercise slot, a study slot, preparing a meal, chatting to friends. The luxury at the moment, of course, is that you get to design that routine yourself to a far greater extent than usual, and that is a luxury. It's what many of you long for when you complain about morning registrations or the other restrictions that normal life demands on you and, and of your preferred rhythms. So whilst, again, I, I don't mean to underplay the seriousness of what's happening at the moment and, and what, what, what the, the coronavirus is meaning to people's lives, if you can keep a positive mindset, then this current state of time can be a blessing in disguise. You may never experience time in this way again. Lastly, Artists um, and musicians um, often talk of time moving strangely in the, in the process of creativity. Maybe that means that this is the perfect time to find some creative expression for yourself, whether you're someone who enjoys drawing or writing song lyrics or making something with your hands or creating a poem or, or playing an instrument or learning an instrument or recording something. Not only might this be a satisfying use of this new time, but it would be something to look back on, a souvenir of these strange days where time seems to have been unlocked and stretches out in front of us in unfamiliar ways. So next week we are on holiday, which will be like no holiday we've ever had before. If you need to get in touch with us the school's not completely closed and if you need to get hold of anyone then our email address is my email address for example is on the school website please do use it if you need to and uh seeing as the the, the meaning of time has changed um we're going to have an assembly next week even though we're on holiday um so i'll speak to you then uh, until then take care all the best <laughs>